Well, the Padres had no fear of the Dodger batting order. I think the Dodgers now have to have fear about who the San Diego Padres have become. That was six hours. A nice headline you put up there, tension and electricity. And it didn't end well for the Dodgers. And I think the most stunning thing is all the junk that happened during the course of Sunday night baseball, the entire nation got to see. They got to see what the Padres have become as a franchise, as a team. They got to see how the Dodgers reacted and how their fans reacted even more badly. Uh, you Darvish was just dominant right from the start. The Padres just continued to hammer Dodger pitching. Six home runs, that's a record. And then the Dodgers started to whine. The Dodgers started to cry. The Dodgers started to yap. There were bean balls. There were home runs. There were unbelievable defensive plays by guys going over the fence to pull home run balls back. And the fans just absolutely lost their mind. The Dodgers look like first place frauds right now. You know, we can praise the history of Dodger baseball, and we should. All the World Series rings, the fact that they've gone to the Fall Classic on an annual basis, Jackie Robinson back in the day. But at the end of the day, you got battered 10 to 2. You got beaten really badly at home. And the 54,000 fans in the stands at Chavez Ravine just kind of look like bums. And yeah, you have booed Manny Machado since Mooney, Manny was back there as the Dodger third baseman that rental season where he said, I don't have to look like Johnny Hustle. And now you got public enemy number one, Jerks and Profar and Left Field. You got public enemy number two, um, Fernando Tatis. And you saw Manny act as a leader in the dugout, pulling his team together, saying, This is who we can be. Look at what we've done to those guys. And then on the mound, you had Jack Flaherty, who just fell apart and then acted like a red ass. That's a baseball terminology when things <laughs> are going bad, screaming at Machado, screaming at Tatis. You know, the Padres are inside the Dodgers' heads right now. Even though the Dodgers won game one of that playoff series, San Diego jumped them early. Now the Padres just bury them in game two. I know it only counts as one victory. Now they come back to Tuesday at Petco Park. I just think it's going to be unbelievable game three of the playoff series. And the Dodgers are battered emotionally. They are battered physically. Their pitching staff is an absolute wreck. And the Padres come home with a chance to finish this thing off by Wednesday night. So, John, that's my one man's opinion on what we're going to talk about. And I ask you this afternoon, go to my website and see my one man's opinion column that I wrote. Yeah, I had some opinions about Dodger fans and the Dodger players. John, you're standing out there in left field. Go ahead. Tell me what you saw, what you think. It was this is why we love sports because it was so entertaining and there was just so many moments, so many different things that happened. And it's interesting listening to John Smoltz kind of break it down about how playoff games are different than regular season games. And at every pitch matters and just the right. I mean, I, you got to say this is a real rivalry now, right? I mean, it's legit. The Padres won the season series. The Padres beat them in 2022. The Padres are tied. They won a game on the road coming home to San Diego. Like you said, they can win it, you know, you know, in the next two games, just like they did in 2022. But I'm just loving this. I've been basking in the glory of this win for the last, you know, what has it been? 18 hours or so. And I just can't wait for the next game to come back down to San Diego. This is so fun. Of the opinion that the Padres are inside the Dodgers' head and the Dodgers get, just cannot handle it because all the trauma they have around them with their pitching staff crisis. Yeah, and then on top of it, you know, they, they were we were playing from behind for pretty much the entire game, you know, and then Profar Robin Mookie of that home run, which is so awesome, you know, just the way he he kind of bounced backwards like a pogo stick and kind of sort of trolling the Dodger fans. It was fantastic television. And I'm, I'm really happy that the nation got to see this Dodger giants games are always a fierce rivalry too, but this one's kind of different. What do you think Lee? I think the dimensions of the franchise in San Diego are very different than they've ever been. And obviously what's befallen this Dodger franchise this year with all the pitching uh, issues and you know that we we talked about it a couple of weeks ago that they've got so many pitchers hurt 
though the epicenter of the pitching crisis in Major League Baseball. But for the Dodgers just to react the way the Dodgers did and for Flaherty to do what he did on the mound and then what he did in a dugout after it got pulled from the game, Dave Roberts is, how's he going to control the emotions of his team? How's he going to gather this pitching staff back? And now Freddie Freeman has re-injured that ankle, and I don't know if he gets to play in game three or game four that could end their season. I mean, this, this to me is just devastating what the Dodgers have become emotionally as well as what's happened to them physically. And the whole nation got to see who the Friars are right now. And there's a lot of people that don't like big market New York Yankee baseball nor big market Dodger baseball. Hell, I'll bet you three-fourths of the nation's becoming brown and gold fans right now. Agree or disagree? Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, definitely agree. Love the the back and forth between Manny and Flaherty when Manny was at third base. I thought Manny handled that like a pro, like a gentleman. Well, maybe not a gentleman, but but definitely like a mature ball player. And, you know, wasn't allowing him to get sucked into all the emotion like, you know, maybe he would have had uh, done it about 10 years ago. But how about you, Darvish? I mean, proving that you don't need to throw a million miles an hour to get guys out. This guy is an artist. So at the end of the day, because you had to proofread my one man's opinion column, was I correct? Was I right? Or was I right? When I told Dr. Fans, take that bitch. Yeah, that's what I was going to remember what you said. It was take that bitch. It's just so funny. And, and the rivalry between the fans is real. It's legit. You know, there's no place, obviously, for throwing stuff onto the field. But I love, like, Tatis, just the fake tears and, and just kind of giving the business to the people in right field. It's just so fun. Um, so I just can't wait for game three. Is it Tuesday night yet? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we go from that topic. There are other playoff games that we need to address just briefly, but you're a Dodger fan, you're a Padre fan, feel free to dial in right now in the chat box for Fans Forum and Express Opinions. Is this series about to end, or do you think this sucker goes to five games? Was that a one-game aberration, or is this the beginning of the changing of the guard in the National League West? Dodger fans... Sucks to be you right now. Padre fans, you want to gloat, you can right now jump into the chat box. Fans forum coming up. Next topic.